In this week's how-to, we're going to have a look at ways to stock a 200 litre reef aquarium. We've come up with three stocking plans which you could either use as they are or alter them a little bit to suit your individual tastes. They're all quite radically different and all of them will be suitable to hold the species at full size and also safe with soft corals, LPS and SPS. Let's take a look at stocking plan A. So the cornerstone of many marine aquariums are clownfish and they often prefer a quieter aquarium with more peaceful species. So in plan A we're going to look at clownfish based aquarium and other species which will go well with clownfish. Now the clownfish we've chosen as you can see in the picture will be common or percular clowns. Both of these species are very similar in their behaviour and their requirements and they often interbreed in the wild and are bred together in captivity as well. Care for both species is more or less the same. Commons do get a little bit more larger than perks. And perks, also you can get a lot of other colour variants, such as frostbites and snowflakes and picassos and things like that. All of those types of clowns will all work in the stock of the plan. If you want to vary it a little bit, you could try some other smaller clowns, such as skunk clowns or something as an alternative. But in our one, we're going to go with just a basic pair of common clowns because everybody likes to have ones that look like Nemo. So the next fish we're looking at in the stocking plan would be a fairy wrasse. Now a lot of fairy wrasse do get quite large, but the one that we're looking at today would be a solo of a fairy wrasse, which tops out at around 4 inches. You could also have an orange back or blue flank, which you get to a similar kind of size. And while not necessarily very easy to get hold of, they're not too difficult to find, and a lot of places would be able to order them in for you. As with all wrasses, a tight fitting lid is a very good idea, and especially so on small reef aquariums, because most of the fish that you're going to be keeping in a small reef aquarium often tend to be small themselves, and therefore use evasion as a way of protecting themselves from predators. So most small reef fish are very, very jumpy, and so a lid is going to be necessary for quite a few of these species. Okay, so the next fish that we're looking at for stocking plan A would be Bangai Cardinals. These are a good, dependable species, they're widely available and they're often captive bred these days. Avoid wild ones from the Bangai Islands themselves because they're overfished there quite heavily. So try to get captive bred or ones from Bali or Sri Lanka sources instead. They can be kept singly or as a pair. If you vent sex the pair, you may even have babies at some point in the future as well. And these form quite an attractive fish to put in the corner of the aquarium. Next we're going to be looking at the bicolour blenny. Now this is quite a popular species of blenny and you'll often see these available. They're good grazers and they don't get as large as starry and algae blennies which can ultimately get a little bit too big for our size and tank. Or at least a little bit too aggressive for some of the other fish that we're going to get put in with it. Alternatives would also be a two spot or a tail spot blenny. But for the setup we've got, a bicolor blending works really well. Okay, the next thing to put into the tank would be a shrimp goby. And there's a huge variety of shrimp gobies available. And nearly all of those would be suitable for the stocking plan. We've decided to go for a wheeler shrimp goby because although they can be kept singly, they can also be maintained in pairs or small groups. And with a 200 litre aquarium and the other fish that we're putting in here, they could easily accommodate two or even four wheeler shrimp gobies which should go, go around together in a little group. No. So the next one we're looking at is another goby for our little aquarium and this one is a cave goby. Now this is one of the more hard to find species. Uh, we get them in quite often here but you do rarely see them elsewhere. They grow to around an inch or so. They can be up singly or in pairs or in small groups and will commonly spawn in a reef aquarium as well. They often spawn here in the shop. They're quite a colourful little fish and while you may not see them all the time, it'll be quite a treat for you when you do see them out and about with their little antics and their little cheery faces. Okay, so the last fish we're looking at for our reef aquarium would be coral gobies. So you can get these in a huge range of colours. We get them in greens, uh, black, silvers, uh, and a variety of other shades. But the one we plump for is yellow because it will give a nice splash of colour to the aquarium. Again, depending on how many of the other fish you put in, in terms of the wheelers and the bang guys, where you could have more than one, 
You might only be able to put one cold goby in the aquarium if you've not stocked too heavily on the other species. You might be able to get as many as half a dozen coral gobies into the aquarium. Now occasionally when spawning they will strip SPS a little bit to lay their eggs, but the damage is fairly minimal on the coral seam covers. They form an entertaining little addition to the tank and this wraps up the end of stocking plan A. Yeah. Okay, so that wraps up stocking plan A and you can see that what we've tried to achieve is quite a wide variety of very small fish. You should be able to get to about 15 fish in the 200 litre aquarium from the species we've mentioned and it gives you quite a good variety of body shapes, behaviours, colours and general activity levels within the tank. We're having some very active species and some more chilled out ones and some that you'll see all the time and some that you'll only see occasionally. Next we're going to take a look at stocking plan B which goes for a much busier, in your face, much more active stocking plan. So next we're going to take a little look at stocking plan B. So in stocking plan B we're going for a very different approach to stocking plan A. Stocking plan A was all about very small fish that were quite quiet and quite peaceful. Stocking plan B is a much more active tank. Most of the fish in this stock plan are going to be out and about all the time. They're brightly coloured, they're on the go, and it's going to add lots of action to the tank. Now if you're going for a tank where you want corals to be the main focus, then you're probably better off with stocking plan A or stocking plan C, because on those the fish are less noticeable and you'll be able to see the corals more. But if you want to primarily focus on the fish, then stocking plan B is going to give you loads of action and in your face colours with the corals providing more of a backdrop rather than the main event in the tank. In the plan we're only going with five species, so it's quite a limited stocking plan, though you could broaden this out a little bit by varying things a little bit here and there. Okay, so the cornerstone of the stocking in stocking plan B will be a large group of damsels. Damsels generally get quite a bad reputation, which is mostly undeserved. The thing with damsels is you need to keep quite a lot of them to even aggression issues out and you have to be very careful in your species selection. In this stocking plan we have gone for azure damsels and there will be a group of 10 of them in there. With small damsels 10 is the minimum number that we recommend putting into a tank because that helps even out the aggression. Now instead of azure damsels you could substitute it for one or four other species which would also work quite as well just as well. Or you can mix and match between the five species to make your ten damsel total spread out over all of them. So you could have say seven of one and three of another or two of each or however you want to do it. As well as the azure damsels which are in the picture here, you could also uh, use yellowtail blue damsels, uh, springers damsels, landy damsels or tolbert's damsels as well. And as I say, you can have all 10 of one type or mix them up to make the 10. These will form the main focus of the stocking. They'll add a lot of colour and movement. And although you could vary it between the few, a good group of azure damsels is quite a showstopper. So next in the stocking plan is some sand sifting gobies. The best goby for this by far are chalk gobies, Valenciana sex guitata as they sift the sand in through the mouth and out through the mouth so they don't tend to build big mouths and they bury corals they can also be kept singly or in a pair one of them would be enough to maintain the sand in a tank this size if you really want to go overkill on it you could add a second one though most people would use conches or starfish as the rest of the cleanup for it these will provide a vital job within the tank in keeping your sand bed clean and provide a nice colour contrast being bright white from the blue and yellow of the damsels. There are quite a few species of Halochorus rafts that you could put into a tank this size and they would all do the same job for pest control, for flatworms and bristleworms but my favourite would be the red line rafts, Halochorus by Ocelatus. It's nice and colourful, usually topping out at only 4 inches Again, as with stocking plan A that we talked about, tight fitting lid is essential with rasses, and also goes for many gobies and other species as well. They provide a nice splash of colour, you could keep one on its own or you could add a second one as well. 
um, as long as you got them when they were small, so one male and one female, and that would form quite a nice bright red colour in contrast to the other colours already in the tank. Yeah. Okay, so our fourth species that we're adding to the tank will be one of the bristle tooth tangs. We've chosen the Hawaiian yellow eye coal tang, being one of the more impressive of the small tang species. And most of the small bristle tooth tangs are happy in a 200 litre tank, even at full size. I'd avoid the larger species, such as the truncatus or white tails and duskies, because they will get too large. But usually any of the yellow eyes, the blue eye tangs, or taminis would all be fine in a 200 litre tank. There are plenty of movement to the tank and it will also do a good job in keeping algae under control. Now our final choice for the tank would be to add a little bit of a splash of colour and add some fish that are going to dart in and out of those rocks. So in this case we've chosen a strawberry dotty back, you could instead choose any of the other small dotty backs, particularly a royal or a diadem. Some of the other more delicate species might get picked on by the water spooked by the sheer boisterous nature of the tank, so I'll probably just stick to one of those three species and just add a single specimen. This rounds off stocking plan B, which gives you quite a full, active, busy tank with lots of in your face colour and action. Next we're going to take a look at stocking plan C, which is quite radically different to what most people would consider fish appropriate for a reef aquarium. Okay, so in stocking plan C we've gone for a micro predator reef tank. Now this is something that you do see occasionally in the States, but is far less common over here. Most of these predatory species are entirely safe from coral, although you may have to be a little bit careful with your choice of mobile inverts you put in particularly small shrimps. So the first species we're going to look at is the white dwarf mooring. These only get to around 18 to 24 inches and about twice the thickness of a pencil. They are quite a hard fish to track down in the trade. We get them in quite often. But you could substitute it with another dwarf species such as the gold spotted or the chain link. But nothing that's going to get to more than 24 inches. You could house something like a snowflake, but it would have to be rehomed later. And you really want one of the truly dwarf species, which are going to stay under two foot, and that makes it nice and easy in the tank. The next part of our stocking would be a zebra dwarf lionfish. And these are highly venomous, so you do have to be careful, especially if you've got small children or pets, and make sure that you have a tightly thin lid, and that everyone in the household knows how to deal with them and to keep away from them. Um, small dwarf lionfish like this one will top out at around 4 inches. The zebra dwarf is quite a docile species and will add some colour and a little bit of movement to the tank. They can become very tame in time and they're relatively easy to handle so it makes quite an easy fish compared to some of the larger or more aggressive members of the scorpion fish family. The third species we're looking at today would be the fuzzy dwarf lionfish. Now you get those in loads of different colour forms. This is a picture of a yellow one that we had a few months ago. They're more typically brown and we occasionally get some red specimens too. They're a little bit more active than a zebra lionfish and a little bit more twitchy and nervous. So you do have to be a little bit more careful when you're cleaning your glass to always know where your lionfish is so you don't accidentally put your hand on them. But they're quite an interesting addition and their cute little faces have loads of appeal for all the family and they make an exciting addition to our micro predator reef tank. So the final fish we're looking at for our micro predator tank would be an eclipse hog fish. These get to around 4 inches which is quite important because some members of the hog fish family can become truly giant. You could also have a Diana's hogfish and there are one or two other small species which you could house but be very wary of buying a hogfish without checking the adult size because some of them can get several feet and quite quickly too. They're very cool fish to have, we could get them as a juvenile, they're a completely different colour and they change within a few months to the beautiful adult colours that you see on the specimen in the folk. And that rounds out just the four fish that we'd have in our micro predator reef tank. You could also substitute some other things into there, like some frogfish or something like that. 
to broaden it out or vary it a little bit but I think these are quite easy to maintain species and it's also quite easy to look after if you go away on holiday a lot. Just put loads of live river shrimp in before you go away on holiday and they will pick themselves silly on all the live shrimp until you get back. That rounds out stocking plan C and so we're going to have a little look now at the overview of the three tanks. Okay, so in summary on our choices here, stocking plan A was quite a traditional style of tank and with many of the species the beginners of the hobby often choose. It's quite a good solid plan and it gives lots of variety of different shapes and behaviours and allows the corals to also really shine through because most of the fish aren't overly active and are generally quite small. Stocking Plan B is a much more active tank. There's lots of colour, there's lots of movement, and in this one the corals will be more of a backdrop to the fish, with the fish being the main event. However, it's a very colourful, bright tank, it has lots of movement, very popular with children because they can see lots zipping around all the time. And if the kids really insist on a pair of clownfish, you could squeeze them in there as well. Stocking plan C was a bit more out there and this would be something that maybe people wouldn't consider for their first tank but after you've been keeping marines for a while it gives quite a nice different change of pace to what everyone else is doing. If you want someone a little bit different and fish that are a little bit more interesting without taking away the emphasis from the corals. Thank you for watching this how to series, make sure you check out our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash salty revolution and also our YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash salty revolution and where you can check out quite a lot of other videos on other topics as well.